Trevor, great meeting up with you again after Saturday. Great achievement at that 20 league goal mark. Uh, I just want to take you back to when you first started out. You originate from Canning Town. I looked it up, I did my homework. Um, what kind of upbringing did you have in London? Uh, to be honest, uh, it, was quite, it was quite difficult. You know, a lot of violence, you know, right. uh, gang activity going on where I'm from. Um, but I was lucky enough to just be focused on football. A lot of my friends were out doing crazy things on the road right, and stuff, right. but I was always focused on football, so that was like my lucky escape. When you say his gangs, I was thinking of Glasgow. My, my upbringing was the same as yours. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, did Camden. you ever go to Camden Market? That's one of my favourite markets. Camden's not too far, yeah. I've been, I've been to Camden, yeah. Any gear? Do you get any no gear, no gear, no gear, no, 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 no. no, no, no. no. <laughs> um, you came through the youth academy or the youth team at uh, Arsenal. How did you enjoy that experience? That was good. Um, obviously, I was there from when I was four or five. And, uh, four or five? Yeah, yeah, it was wow. quite early. It was quite early. Um, I've been into football from a, from, from, a, from a baby, so as soon as I got signed up for Arsenal, that's when it got serious for me, and um, yeah, I've just been there ever since. And growing up in London, Arsenal fan? I was a Chelsea fan. Chelsea first. fan, okay, yeah. yeah. I like so your honesty. Yeah, because I was a fan of Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. So, oh, was that your, your yeah, yeah, boyhood yeah. hero kind that of thing? Yeah, that was my boyhood wow. yeah, so wow. I met him a few weeks ago. So um, that's why I started off supporting Chelsea, and then I signed for Arsenal, and then it was Thierry Henry that I started to follow from there. So it's no, two, no bad strikers. Not bad to look up to, yeah, <laughs> not bad. Yeah. Um, and in that team, the youth team, progress to greater things either way, Arsenal or elsewhere? Yeah, there's a few. There's like the Hector Bellerin, um, there's Alex Iwobi. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there, there was quite a few, a few others playing in uh, different leagues and stuff like that. I played against Isaac Hayden the other days yeah, at Norwich, yeah. Norwich yeah. City. So a few players did go on to have good careers. Um, you played several games in Arsenal's first team. Your debut was against Sunderland. I've seen you beat them. Was it three one? I think so. Yeah. What's your memories of that debut? How exciting! Where, how exciting was it? It was exciting. There was a big build up to it because it was Meza Ozil's debut as well. So right. obviously his new superstar coming and so yeah, yeah. all the focus was on him and then. Um, I remember Giroud got injured towards the end and I was asked to get my gear on quick and I was, I was amazed. I was only 17 years old, you know, right. so it was a special moment for me. Was the adrenaline flowing? Yeah, it was, it was. The excitement and yeah, nervousness was. Was of both. You were then loaned out to several clubs. How difficult was that bobbing around thinking, well, where's my future going here? It's difficult, especially like my first loan was 18. So a lot of players are playing in the, in the under 18 or in the reserves at that mm -hmm. time, but I was in League One playing at Coventry and Brentford City, so I was thrown straight into men's football. So it was quite difficult for me, I couldn't really settle, but yeah, yeah. it definitely helped me and become the player that I am today. Uh, breaking into the Arsenal first team must have been daunting. I mean, I, I've, I've looked up some of the names, Sanchez, Giroud, Welbeck. Yeah. That's, they're all experienced international players, you, you're a young lad, that must yeah. have been daunting. It is. Um, I was quite excited, to be honest, because mm -hmm. it's like... It's, a, it's amazing players, you know, big names, Santi Cazorla, Sanchez, Thomas Rosicky, Jack Wilshire, you know, these are these are players that I look up to when I was in the youth team. So I just wanted to gain as much knowledge and learn as much as I could from them. And it was who, who was your role model when you were at the Arsenal? Who did you look to and think, I'll take a few tips off him? Or... It, was probably, it was probably Giroud. Right. And the reason why I'd say that is because um, we're two different types of strikers. So... If I could add to what he was good at to my game, mm -hmm. then it would make me a better player. So I used to always talk to him about heading. He was probably the he best. Was, was he more than happy? Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. always always willing to teach me about my movements and my finishing, especially heading, timing of the heading, because I wasn't so good heading mm -hmm. when I was younger. So Join the club. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I worked on it a lot. I worked on it. It was one of my weaknesses, but he did teach me a lot of how to time my heading. He's just not a bad career, is he? Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. amazing. Um, Arsene Wenger, ma manager at Arsenal, was quoted as saying, I believe Chuba has the attributes to make an impression. The first team to fill his potential is down to him. Yeah, but uh, obviously, as a young player coming through, he probably saw the ability that I had. But mm -hmm. as always, it's down to mentality and down to hard work. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't quite make that step to the Arsenal first team. Um, because it's, it's tough, you know. Well, to I named all the guys. Exactly. Front of you. It is. It is tough. I've made a few appearances, but I couldn't quite keep it in there. But um, everything happens for a reason, and I enjoyed it while I was there. So, yeah. Is that what you believe? Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I, I think everything happens for a reason. Um, maybe I wasn't ready at the time. Yeah, yeah. So young. Uh, maybe, maybe I had to go out there and play for other apply teams. Apply the trade. Apply my trade. Exactly. So. Was Wenger um, as cool as he portrayed? 
I mean, it wasn't cool when he faced Man United, but Sir Alec Ferguson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it cool in the main or? He was, yeah, he was. He Super was cool. Very cool. Um, kind of similar, similar calmness to the gaffer that we have now. Oh, Michael Carrick. Yeah, Michael, Michael Carrick. Okay. Yeah. Whereas, um, I don't think I've seen Wenger like shout or go crazy or something right. like that. Maybe one time I've seen him go crazy, but um, apart from that, pretty much chilled. And what do you like in a manager? I mean, you've, you've been in law, you've been at the Arsenal, you've been here, you've been abroad. What do you like in a manager? Do you like one that shouts at you and gives you it or one that's cool? And what do you like? Cool. Cool, cool right, yeah. okay. I don't think I don't think you can get the best out of your players from just shouting at them, to be honest. That's my opinion. Yeah, no. I Maybe things have changed now, you know. You know, the modern day player probably needs an arm around him and a cuddle and, a cuddle a and stuff like that. And all that. Yeah, yeah. I liked a cuddle, I never got one, but I, I used to like <laughs> you it. You didn't need one, you were scoring all the goals yeah, anyway. So. I, I was different. I wanted yeah. that um, volatile manager who used to if really? I wasn't doing it, I didn't mind him telling me, yeah. Why did, why did you like that? Was that when um, he was younger? Or? Because if I wasn't doing it, I would know myself I'm not doing it, and I need somebody to really tear, tear me to shreds and say, you, come on, you. And, really? And that, that cheered me up. Whereas some of my pals didn't like that mm. in the dressing room. They, they thought that was bullying. How about if another one of your players did that to you? Was that... Was that... That was fine, I would was give fine. them it back. <laughs> Even though they were right, I was still trying to defend my yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Your Arsenal career came to an end and you signed for, how do you pronounce the Greece side? Pauk. Pauk. Right, yeah. I wasn't going to embarrass myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was 2018. Yeah. You had a good time over there, didn't you? I did, I did. I took a step into the unknown. Uh, I was way out of my comfort zone. But that was the step that I was willing to take for my career. And... Um, yeah, it, it did pay off the first few seasons. I enjoyed it. And in 2020, you moved to Teesside. Yeah. Scored in your debut 1-1 draw against QPR. Uh, did you get a bit of a shot when you arrived in this in industrial Teesside? I mean, when I come off the train in 84, 85, you weren't even born, um, I thought I'd landed in the moon. There was cooling towers, smog. Obviously, it's an industrial. And I thought, what is this? I'm from the city of Glasgow. Yeah. And I got a bit of a shot. It took me one year to settle. Wow. So did you settle instantly or did you find it hard on and off the pitch? I probably did find it hard because uh, I just had a newborn son at the time as well. Right. And um, it was quite difficult for me my first season. I think the playing style didn't suit the way that I played and probably wasn't, I probably wasn't the right match to be in, the, in that squad and stuff like that. But um, like I said, everything happens for a reason and uh, the pass is the pass. Uh, your first season... Didn't go to plan, you touched on that there, and you ended up back in Greece. By all accounts, they idolised you. Yeah? yeah? You won a cup and banged a few goals in, and yeah, important yeah, goals, I've read up about that. <laughs> uh, did you think your borough days were over? I did. Yeah. I did. Um, to be fair, um, I did. I, I spoke to a few of the players and uh, while I was on loan, and they did say that uh, the gaffer at the time would probably like me as a player because I'd probably suit his, uh, his, his style of play. Yeah. So I did think, like, mm, there might be a bit of a chance when I came back in pre-season. But obviously, uh, I was told otherwise from then. So that's when I really thought, you know, maybe my Middlesbrough days are over. Mm -hmm. And then things just quickly changed. I mean, a lot of people had written you off, including myself. Yeah. I watched and I thought, he ain't going to do it here because, again, style five at the back. I'd have done away with the five at the back ten years ago. Yeah. Um, and I knew it would suit guys like you, but I didn't know when you went away and came back. I couldn't believe how good, well, how good you were and how good you are. And my mates who ex pros at Middlesbrough, I'm not saying who they are. That's <laughs> they, they all couldn't believe how good you were, because you showed everything: hold up play, vision, goals, your touch, your work rate. You've got a habit of standing next to the defender, and then you bolt, and the, the defender's looking where you've gone. You know what a turnaround! How, how has that happened? Um, like I said, I think the first season. I probably just wasn't myself because uh, I just didn't suit the style of play, to be honest. It was purely down to that. The, the and there was a lot of things going on behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that private, yeah. People probably don't know about, but... Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just, it, just, it just didn't happen. And that happens sometimes for players, you know. Uh, it takes a while for them to settle or whatnot. But um, this season, I just feel myself. I feel completely myself. Um, I think everyone's starting to see, like the player that I am and how I do play and my strengths and stuff like that, so I'm glad about that. I was surprised when I met you on Saturday for the first time that uh, how tall you are. Yeah. Everyone says that. Everyone says that. And I thought you were a wee bit chubby. I know they call you chubby, chubby, but I thought, <laughs> you know, you're, you're well built, you're tall. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realise how big you are. No, I, I get that a lot. I get that a lot um, from fans and stuff. Um, I don't know, maybe it's, it's because 
but generally taller guys are not as mobile as I am or something like that. Maybe that, yeah. Yeah, it might be that, I don't know. But um, yeah, I like to think So that. just off the hoof, um, when you're training, do you stay over? Bag of balls, stay over? Do you practice on your own or is it just when the team turns up? Um, I, I do sometimes, but because we have so many games, I can't really... Okay. You know, I, yeah, yeah. I might have a little niggle in the hammy or the calf right. sometimes, and I might just need to rest. So the coaches always tell me to go inside, you know. I wish you did that, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> on Boxing Day, you banged in a hat trick against Wigan. Yeah. That was your first uh, hat trick for the club. How, how sweet was that? Uh, amazing. You know how it is. I don't know how many hat tricks you've got for mid as well. But seven. Seven, yeah. You, you'll get them. Don't you worry. You'll get them. Don't panic. <laughs> but, so, uh, sorry about that. Yeah. No, no. Um, that feeling. No, yeah, go on. So, you know that feeling already, Bernie. You know, like taking a match ball home. You feel like you're on top of the world, you know. I think it was a sellout that, that game as well at the Riverside. Yeah. And, you know, my friends were there and stuff. And it's just a special occasion. So, so. get the ball. Still got the ball, good yeah. Good lad, are you going to keep it? I'm going to keep it. Yeah. I got it all signed by everyone. That's good. My little man was kicking it around straight right. away, though, yeah. Right, right. It's, it's really. a bit dirty right now, I think. <laughs> of them. But, yeah, match ball's a match ball when it's coming home. It's See, I love nothing better. Over the years, we've had, before you arrived, I've, I've seen, I've been here since, what, 84, 85. I've seen all the managers, I've commented in all the Borough games, and I've seen managers taking players off with two goals. Oh. And that infuriates me. Because I know what it's like, and I know how good it is. Yeah. And, and I don't get it. You never see Messi getting taken off of his... He's on his hat-trick, Ronaldo hat-trick, but we've got a, a bad habit in England of taking players off and if you do, Carrick's not done it to you, and I'm glad about that because it infuriates me. No, that's the that's one thing I love about uh, Woody, Danksy and the gaffer. Um, they always keep me on um, when I've scored two goals. You know, they know how hungry I am. Even against Wigan when I scored a hat-trick, they could have easily brought me off, but I was, I was fighting for the fourth goal, mm -hmm. so... Um, yeah, and I never in my career have I played so many 90 minutes. Like, I was thinking about that the other day. I've never consistently played right. like this in my life before. You're so not feeling the effects? Are you feeling stronger I'm and feeling greater strong. because of the form you're in? The yeah, yeah, in? yeah. I don't, feel, I don't feel... It's all in the mind, isn't it? It's all in the head. Of course it is. So of course it is. When you're enjoying it, you want to play every single second of the game. Of course you do. And I respect the manager for that. Uh, back to this season. Did you? When did you become aware you were on a 20-goal... Well, to do break a record, when were you when were you aware of that? Um, I can't remember now. You know, everything's happened so quickly. It must have been maybe when I was on twelve goals, twelve league goals, or something like that. That I was getting like tweets and messages, right, talking about um, you know Bernie's got that record, uh, try and beat it and stuff. So it was probably around then. Okay, um, your form in front of goal this season has been absolutely fantastic. No, not just at Middlesbrough, but in the Championship, you're number one. Does that Make you think I'm going to get more? Does it put more pressure? What, what, what do you feel as a, an individual? Um, you would know as well, you know, as a striker, it's, it's just, it's never enough, is it? No. It's never enough, you know. Um, in training, uh, I've, I've said it many times, I celebrate goals and stuff. Brilliant. And all the lads get a bit annoyed about it, but I just love scoring. I love the feeling of the ball hitting the back of the net. So we've got 11 games left. Uh, there's a lot of goal scorers in the championship as well, and... I don't just want to sit down and, and relax. I want to go again and again and again every single game. And then at the end of the season, I can reflect on things. If I asked you, would you rather score the key goal or, and play garbage? You score the winner, play rubbish, or play fantastically well and don't score, what would you rather do? I'd rather have the worst game of my life well. and score. <laughs> <laughs> You're a real goal scorer. <laughs> that, that's the answer I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I hear guys saying, you know, does it?" Well, of course it is. Yeah. I'd rather play garbage and score a goal yeah. of importance. 100%. Um, Chris Wilder went, Michael Carrick came in. Did you, well, I think you've answered this earlier because you, you th I would have thought, here we go again, another manager, new ideas, don't know what he's up to. But you're aware that he would come in and change the, the formation or did you hear anything about Carrick's tactics beforehand or were you concerned? No, I was actually really excited because right. uh, a good friend of mine is Jaden Sancho at Manchester United. Okay. And he had nothing but good things to say about the manager. So I kind of knew already, you know, what to expect from the gaffer. But I didn't know it would go this well, you know. <laughs> but he can. It's yeah, incredible. What it's been amazing. Around. It's been From the day, first day he's come in, it's been amazing. So So when he dismantled the back five, I mean, I personally, I mentioned earlier, I was, I was delighted with that. Uh, he also encourages the team to play good football, attacking football. I mean, I've not seen attacking football at Middlesbrough for 
probably 12, 14 years. This is the best I've seen for a long, long time. Yeah. And I love it. Now I come to the game, I know who's playing where, because yeah. you don't usually take it with the team. I know that we're going to entertain. Yeah. We might not win every game, but we know we're going to get a show. Yeah. And that's a great feeling for you as a centre forward, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is um, like you said, we, we all know our roles. Yeah. But to be fair, you should see the way that we train, you know, we, the intensity in training. It's full on. It's full on, yeah. Every single day, you know, um, it's never an easy session. No matter what team you're, you're on in, in training, both teams are amazing. So when it comes to a game day, it kind of makes things easier. Is it all with the ball in training? I mean, in my day, you used to run up and doing hills and sandbanks and even <laughs> this stage of the season, bonkers. Is it all with the ball? No. It's all with the ball, but it's... I feel like that's even harder. Do you know, like when you're tired legs yeah, yeah, and you've got to yeah. control the ball still. Like today, uh, today was a tough session. You know, one v ones, two v twos. Oh, you do the one v ones now. Yeah, do you enjoy yeah, that? Yeah. Or do you think? Enjoy it's hard work. Oh, it's hard, hard work. work. I know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. We enjoy it. We all love it. So, so. Um, how important is Giles? I mean, the most creative player to to yourself in the team. Yeah, he's been terrific. Man. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Uh, I've always said it. Like from when I first came here, he's, he's Premier League Premier League player. With Middlesbrough, by God's grace. Um, yeah. But definitely Premier League player. I think he's only, what, 22, 21. Yeah, and yeah. He's amazing, you know. I mean, some people might say to me, oh, he's flawed defensively. I say, well, the majority of modern-day full-backs, wing-backs, are flawed defensively. But going forward, by God, he's, he's delivery. He, yeah. he actually lifts his head. He does a cross blind and yeah. he's looking for runs like, yeah. with you and the other lads. So. Striker's dream, eh? Striker's, Striker's dream, dream, yeah, brilliant. I reckon I could have hit two goals this season. Easily. With my suit on. Easily, easily. <laughs> easily. <laughs> um, I notice you bless yourself every, after every game. I did the same. Yeah. Uh, is, is that, obviously you're religious, does that get you through your games as well, as life? I seen one of your goals actually. You was on your knees celebrating, and you. Yeah, you I, I, I did that as well. I, you and I, th I didn't look to the heavens. Yeah. I had a bad back. No, but I always, I always bless myself, and that gets you through your career as well as life in general. Yeah, for me, the most important thing to me is God. Brilliant. Um, I wouldn't be where I am without the faith I have in God. You Brilliant. Know? When the beginning of the season, when the things was looking all down for me, I had. You saw with the faith. I had the faith, and that's what's got me to where I am now. So. Yeah, my faith in God is number one. I was the same. I would, uh, I would write things in bits of paper and yeah, thank Jesus, yeah. whatever. And uh, I used to pray that I don't get injured yeah. and that I would score a goal and do well yeah. for my family, whatever, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so I appreciate that. And I look and I think, yeah, great. Thank you. A lot of similarities. I noticed in your first season at Borough, you wore the number 19. Now you're wearing 29. Yeah. yeah. Are you, you're no superstitious, are you? You here next season? Will you be fighting for the 29? Saying, "Hey, come on, that's my goal." <laughs> I've got to be honest with this. Yeah, uh, be honest. Beginning of the season, when I didn't, I didn't have a squad number. Right. And 29 was one of the only options available for me. Because I, I was told I was only allowed a, a certain amount of numbers, so I just said 29. And 29 means a lot to me now. You know, oh, it does. Of course, it's, 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 it does. A, it's a big number for me. So. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I don't want to change it. So next Definitely. season you'll be saying, hey, I want the 29. Yeah. No messing. Yeah, you're right. 100%. You're right in demanding that. 100%. Uh, you've represented England at 16s up to 21 level. Um, did I see somewhere that you, you more or less says Nigeria is going to be your national team? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's my country. It's yeah. my parents' country. Yeah. I've been wanting to represent Nigeria for a long time, to be honest. Right. But... Um, the strike force has been amazing. They've got right. amazing, amazing strike force. Right. But um, yeah, it'll be amazing to get a call up. It'll be amazing. Has it ever crossed your mind that England should have maybe had a look at you this season? <laughs> no, see, I'm being serious. Palace have played me centre half, played in a lower division, championship level, played for England. Yeah. The late great Brian Clough never played in the top flight, got yeah, a couple of that, caps yeah. for England. So, yeah. You you've know. just been so good this season. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm no English by any stretch of imagination. You think I'm Scottish? I played for Ireland. You know, Island, yeah. I played for the Republic. Wow. So. How many caps? Uh, seven. I seven. didn't get cap till I was 29. Wow. And I went to the World Cup with uh, Jack Charlton. You've heard of Jack Charlton? Jack Charlton, yeah. The late, great Jack Charlton. Uh, I get in the back door two games and they took me. Wow. To so all the time you were scoring, you weren't getting... No, but I ended up talking to the Scottish manager, a guy called Andy Roxburgh. Yeah. And he says he would cap me, be a full cap. And then I spoke to Jack a week later. And he says, you hang fire, son. Oh, okay. So you're not, so he's not think, hey, I think you deserve a cap. Well, if you've gone to Nigeria, good luck with that. And yeah. Brilliant. Because I say I'm not English, so I don't give a damn, really. <laughs> 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 no, it was funny, like, during the World Cup, all the Middlesbrough fans were saying, like, Gareth Southgate should call me up and stuff. That was... 
that was good. Uh, yeah, but it's that's good how good you've been. You yeah. know, I mean, to give you a cut as a recognition, to say, hey, well done, championship top scorer, you've been flying, doing brilliantly well. Yeah, I think as a, an accolade, say, hey, well done. But yeah. Bamford got one, didn't he? Patrick Bamford, I know he's with Leeds. Yeah. But he was at Middlesbrough Brian and then never got, and then he went to Leeds and, and he got a cap. Who knows? Um, you never know. In the England 21s, I worked with Gareth Southgate as oh, well. Oh, did you? So, yeah. so how did you find Gareth then? Top. Top, another, oh, I, love, another. I love Gareth yeah, as a yeah. person. Yeah. Really, really nice, like man management and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, once again, took me to the gaffer, chilled, chilled, relaxed, knows how to manage players. So, um, yeah, who knows? He knows how I play and stuff. He's, yeah, yeah. He's familiar with Are you this. amazed that the transition that, that he's he's went into the obviously with the full England squad? Are you amazed what he's achieved, getting to finals and yeah. semi-finals? Could you believe that he made that transition? Um, a little bit, a little bit, because of, because of the way he managed the players and uh, the quality of players that he had at his disposal, you know, mm. so, yeah, um, I'm, not, I'm not massively surprised, I'm not massively surprised. When was the last time you heard of myself? When was, it, when was the first time you heard of myself? Is it near the goal thing? Is it because of somebody saying, oh, he's a critic, or he's got an opinion, or he's off his head? What was it? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, tell me. I've, had, I've heard some I, things about you, I, man, yeah. and I'll be honest. I'll be honest. <laughs> that's good, that's good. No, that's yeah, good. yeah, yeah, no, yeah, um, yeah. First of all, uh, when I first heard about you, I went on YouTube straight away, because when right. I first heard it, it was when people told me that, you know, the record is yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'd probably say maybe 11, 12 goals in. I right. heard about you. Right. So I went on YouTube and I watched, there's one video that shows all your goals. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was just watching, I was thinking like, I'm you're, do you're, you're I'm an amazing goal scorer. <laughs> <laughs> no, because honestly, when people have set records before you, it's good to go and look them up and see how they did it as well, so you can learn. So uh, I saw that you're just passionate about the way that you, you love scoring goals. Yeah. And that's something that we share as well, you know, yeah. the way that you celebrate yeah, jumping yeah. on the fence. Love it, love it. I love goal celebrations. I hate yeah. people go out and go and head yeah. off back. I hate that. I like yeah. get, get the lot. The other week when you cut your shirt off, I was I was on the pitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've got a six pack out of belly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we exchanged a uh, text message uh, just after you got the hat trick against Wigan and your reply ended with, I'll be chasing that 20 wee smelly face. Well, here we are. Yeah. How good does it feel? It feels good. It feels good. Uh, I'm, I'm really motivated and uh, I had my eye on it. I had my eye on it, especially when we spoke then, you know. So it's good to, to have done it. After your record goal haul, you jumped in the balls behind the goal. Some people are saying Slavin-esque. Well, obviously, if you watch videos, was that partly in your head or was that... It was, it was. Oh, was it? Right? Yeah, yeah, I said, I said when, I, when I get 20, I'm going to do that celebration. Right. So... I was humbled and, by that. You yeah, know, people yeah. were blinking it and saying, oh, he's, he's done that, and yeah. that was lovely, you know? Yeah. Do you know, I actually missed it live. I think I told you, sad. I missed it live because everybody ran a butcher and two boys get 20 and they're really? all coming, mate. <laughs> and I'm doing this and I got into the lounge, the, the host the lounge, and people are going, Did you see him jumping on that? And I says, I never even seen it. I'll tell you what you <laughs> Oh, did. you missed it. I missed it. No, but I've seen it. I've watched it. Oh, watched and it. and uh, I have to say, you've got great balance. I had a fence to lean on you. You were like this. I, when I first got in it, I was like, And then he slipped. I could have injured myself. But, uh, <laughs> no, it was nice. It was a nice feeling. Brilliant, nice great. Feeling. What a buzz, eh? Yeah. Fantastic. Amazing. Amazing. Living games left. Yeah. You look for more goals, we look for more points. You're in fine form, the team's in fine form. We must be confident that we're gonna get in well, we're gonna get in the top six at least. You know, chipping away, you know, yeah. every, every game every game just taking it one by one by one and your next game Swansea, get the three points there hopefully and just keep going. That's all that we can do really. When you get in the park, do you think I'm gonna score goals today? Is that what your thought is? Uh, I think I'm, I think I want to score goals. Today. Oh, you want, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I want to score goals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that every day. Every See, day. I, th I don't think a lot of modern players think like that. I really? think modern players, some of them don't care. They don't count the goals. Yeah. They count the money. Counting your goals, then you count your money. Goals first. And yeah. you've obviously got that mentality. This season, you. Yeah. Definitely. I think you want to go and get another. See how many more you can get. You know yeah, Because I mean? yeah. every goal you score, everybody benefits. Exactly. You know and, I, and I said it from the beginning that my, my main uh, target is for us to get promoted. So. I don't care how the ball goes in, as long as it goes in, and it helps to us. And would you fancy playing in the, the top flight? Obviously, you, you, you would. Yeah, that's that's been my dream. That's been yeah. one of my targets as well. I came, I came with ambition because I was part time in Glasgow, and I came with ambition of playing the top flight, playing at Wembley International. Fortunately, I got there. Yeah. Um, difficult, but it can happen. You know what I mean? It can happen, can it? Of course, of course. And uh, to, to dream about that. The Premier League, I think personally, it would suit you. 
I get told that when we get promotion, there's, there's a guy called Gary McAllister, who's Stephen Gerrard's number two at I Rangers and at Villa. And I used to go to see nightclubs as him in Glasgow, and then I met him. They beat us. It was Leicester City last game of the season, and we had to want to get promoted, providing a couple of um, games goes our way. Anyway, we get beat, we end up the playoffs, but eventually got promotion. But he says to me, Bernie, you'll love it because if you play football and you, and you can play football, which you can, uh, you'll love it. Because yeah. championship, there's a lot of thugs. Thugs, that's not the right word. There's a lot of over-the-top men and yeah. dirty challenges. I've so. seen you losing it on Saturday, by the way. Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But when you got there, they're better defenders. Yeah. And it's not all about clogging and kicking. and yeah. You know what I mean? So I personally think it would suit you. Thank you. And do you enjoy that? Going deep? I did that. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I yeah. love it. Getting on the ball. I need to be connected in the game. Yeah, I can't yeah. be disconnected. You know, some strikers can just stay in the box and score, but... I need to be connected, even if it's one touch here, one yeah, touch there, going yeah, wide. I need yeah. to just be involved in the game. Yeah. So, yeah. Chuba, thank you very much. It's, it's a great. pleasure. It's been, I'm absolutely it's been delighted great. for you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank I you very it. much. Yeah, good, that. good, good. Chuba, <laughs> nice. Ipom, what more do you want? It was all right, wasn't it?